it's me back in this freaking car making content that nobody asked for cheers to that Hi, my name is Sara. Welcome or welcome back to this channel. Do you ever just feel sad sometimes just because of your brain chemistry? Thing is, there's nothing to be concerned about. If it was something to worry about, I wouldn't be making a YouTube video. Don't worry about me. I'm on meds, I go to therapy, I'm fine. Sometimes you just go through a rough patch and that's okay. I think the most frustrating part about being sad with no explanation is that I can't even take a depression nap. All my friends are like, just take a nap and you'll feel fine. Bitch, falling asleep is an effort. Falling asleep is a chore. I have to fully prepare for that shit. It takes hours. I've even freaking given up my nightly routine of going on my iPad and watching YouTube videos because of that stupid blue light that supposedly keeps you up. I don't even know if it keeps you up, but like, I'm so committed to trying to achieve some kind of normal sleep pattern that I've given that up. Honestly though, that iPad is my freaking life. If there's anything that I'm thankful that my previous school gave me, it's an iPad and a raincoat. So instead of watching YouTube videos, I've been reading Roald Dahl's like really fucked up stories for adults. And they are like, like seriously whack. I read one last night where it was about this like old woman who found this cat and she believed that he was a reincarnation of some famous classical music artist and then her husband threw the cat into a bonfire. Call me stupid but I much prefer when Roald Dahl wrote about um, a boy who lived inside a peach with some bugs. It's on these sleepless nights that I really miss my old psychiatrist because she just enjoyed putting me on like the heaviest medication she could find. She had me on these insane sleeping meds that within 20 minutes of taking I would fall asleep regardless of where I was regardless of what I was doing honestly it was such a game it was so much fun like where am I gonna fall asleep tonight now all I get is two melatonin tablets and we all know that's about as effective as blow drying your hair with your mouth today in my art class we were talking about the possibility of life being a simulation and honestly I think if this were the sims I would be one of those sims where you just like play with the controls and see how ugly you can make the person just so that you don't feel bad later when you experiment with like how many different ways you can kill a sim. I assume that a lot of people think that I'm self-deprecating in an attempt to be relatable, but really I'm not. There are much easier ways to be relatable. I'm just really not a fan of myself. I have very low self-esteem, half the reason why I'm in therapy. I don't know, when I think of myself, I just, I feel like I'm dog poo. It doesn't matter if you put me in a fancy plate or like garnish me with freaking gold leaves. At the end of the day, I'm still dog shit on a plate. Speaking of dogs though, I freaking love dogs. I think they are so adorable, but I don't know how to be around them. I've grown up with cats my whole life and I don't understand them. I picked up my friend's dog a while ago and I was holding it like this and you know cats just land on their feet so I kind of forgot that dogs don't do that and I'm just holding this dog like this and I just let go and this dog just landed like with this massive thud on their wooden floor. It started whimpering and I've never felt so bad in my entire life and they don't purr so like how do I know if you like what I'm doing? On another note, lately I've had a lot of weird Uber drivers. I find that there's like no middle ground. I never have a normal Uber driver. They either like talk about how they want to marry or date me and then I freaking like check the car door make sure that if I need to I can just drop and roll or they gently insult me one time I was in an uber and the driver asked me where I was going and I said that I had an appointment and he was like oh for your skin and I was like uh, no for my freshly bruised self-esteem thank you very much sir with regards to my skin though I just don't get it I follow exactly what my dermatologist tells me to do my diet is mostly plant-based I take meds but no my body's just like clear skin Nah, not for you. It's just unfair, you know? God damn it. I always think about my acne in terms of, like, my family. Yeah, I look at the people in my family and, like, round about the time when their acne kind of died down. Everybody was around 17, 18 when their skin started behaving, and I'm here at 18 and a half. No, not even. 18 and, like, what? Eight months? Still nothing. Should I be concerned? Probably. I come from such a wonderful family. Like, all my cousins and my brother and, like, everyone around me is so freaking talented, and I'm like, what? They're all so beautiful beautiful as well. Maybe I would care less about my appearance if I wasn't a 2 out of 10 in terms of personality as well. Oh my god, if I was a food, I'd be a dry fucking rice cake. I'm so boring. I really wonder why people watch my channel. So this is addressed to you watching this, if you've even made it this far into the video, because if you have, mad respect to you. What do you watch me for? Does it help you feel better about yourself and the state that your life is in? Is it funny to see what a shitty person I am? No, I'm gonna stop being so self-deprecating. 
because honestly that makes people concerned and whilst it may be funny to me it's not that funny to other people because I don't know when other people make self-deprecating jokes I'm more concerned than I find it funny I don't want people to be concerned I'm really fine I've been this way my whole life the events in my life have made me realize that I shouldn't take myself that seriously because you know life is a big joke I read a quote one time that said life is a party and I'm the pinata and I've never resonated with a quote more in my life oh my god pinatas when's the last time I was at a party with a pinata I miss parties from when we were little I miss getting a party pack when I leave every day you eat like a little piece of whatever from your party pack and it's just a reminder of the good time that you had why did we stop rewarding our friends for hanging out with us I feel like we should do that more often I want to go to a party where it's like a throwback to my childhood don't get me wrong I love going to parties especially house parties I think those are so much fun but I miss the the thought and the effort that went into children's parties because it's not hard to host a house party you get some alcohol some disposable cups and a speaker and that's it but children's parties oh my god you needed party favors you needed party hats you needed balloons cake as a teenager if you go to a party you're lucky if you get like a bowl of stale chips and chances are those chips are all touched by somebody who was fingering somebody else in the bathroom you know when I was in like grade 8 I thought that I would have my life well not my life but I thought that I would have things kind of in order by the time I was in trick but honestly I feel like I haven't aged past 11 I still feel just as out of control as I did when I was a child what I distinctly remember being a grade 8 at an all girls school and looking at the matrix and being like wow those are women they know what they're doing they have purpose and the more I ask older people about when I'm gonna have my life figured out the more I learn that I'm not gonna ever have my life figured out I've asked my brother who's 25 and he's like I don't know what the fuck's going on and then I thought well of course by the time you're 30 you'll have everything together and you'll have your life in order and then I spoke to 30 year olds and they're like bro I still don't know what the fuck's going on and I speak to my parents and they're like <laughs> Dude, life is fucking crazy. I don't know what's going on. So I guess none of us really know. We're all just pretending. I guess that's why I try not to take myself too seriously because I know that life's a joke. We think so deeply about certain things that shouldn't matter. And I just like to think of like comforting nihilism. That's one of the nicest things to think about. If you are ever stuck in a rut, nihilism is the way to go because nothing you do matters because you are a speck, a tiny speck. Nothing you do matters that much. It's not gonna affect the universe you know so it's okay to fuck up but at the same time that kind of thought can also be like really dangerous because you can start thinking well i'm just a speck so i'm gonna do whatever the fuck i want i'm not gonna put any effort into my life so like don't take it that far and be reasonable about it i'm not saying give up on your life i'm just saying nobody cares about the fact that your skirt was tucked into your tights because you're just a speck it's okay why am i speaking at the speed of fucking lightning oh my god calm down take a breather even that i'm telling myself to calm down but i'm still saying it as if i'm on one point five speed on youtube am i the only person who does that i speed up every video that i watch on youtube i want to fully capitalize on my time so why not put them all on double speed and watch twice as many youtube videos as i could have watched before i feel like it just really helps get to the point a hell of a lot faster because nowadays every youtuber does like a four minute intro and i'm just over that bullshit like oh my god i will never do that so help me god if i ever do that in the future of my youtube channel unsubscribe i don't deserve it and ads on youtube like oh my god youtube is really pushing for you to get youtube premium calm down stop shoving it down my throat nobody's gonna buy youtube premium name one fucking person who has youtube premium i'll wait actually i can't think of one person but that person doesn't count and honestly what does youtube premium do for me that ad blocker can't god bless the person who made ad blocker thing like wow and you made it free you are really a godsend thank you sincerely from the bottom of my heart what kind of a selfless person do you have to be to make ad block free i'm telling you if i was smart enough to figure out that shit i would charge a heck of a lot of money for that my cappuccinos won't buy themselves oh my god i spend a ridiculous amount of money on coffee but the thing is if i'm getting a cappuccino if i make it at home it's never the same as when i buy one i don't know how to get the foam right somebody teach me but lately i don't know if this is just a me thing tell me if this has ever happened to you before the baristas at the coffee shops that i go to find it really funny to be like oh sorry there's no almond milk i'm like oh there go my hopes and dreams and then they're like psych we got you joke of the fucking year wow hilarious i don't get it like why would you put me through that emotional trauma the roller coaster of emotions that i've just been on it went from like up here at the prospect of getting coffee then down here when you told me there was no almond milk and then like a mild mix of excitement and also confusion at like what you just made me go through also why is almond milk so expensive no man that's not okay it's literally just water oil and almonds like calm the fuck down it doesn't need to be five to ten rand extra for me to get almond milk 
milk instead of cow titty juice. Surely it costs more to farm cows than it does to farm almonds. Correct me if I'm wrong, I don't exactly know the science behind it, but something seems a little weird there. I feel like you're just charging me extra because you want me to pay for being like a Cape Town hipster. Are hipsters even a thing anymore? They died out in like 2015 and I just, I haven't seen one in a, in a while. Are they extinct? Is that a dead trend? I don't know, I don't really keep up with the times. Hipsters have been replaced with like soft boys and e-boys and e-girls and visco girls. The times are changing. It's so hard to keep a finger on the pulse of modern culture nowadays. What the fuck is even going on? I don't even know what's hot and what's not and I'm a teenager, I should know this shit. Guys still don't even know how to say that. I'll insert it here. How the fuck do you say that? I need like a YouTube explanation as to what that means, how to say it and where it comes from honestly. Because what is that? Honestly, sometimes I feel like I'm 50 already because I look at teens and I'm like, I don't understand you. I just don't. I'm afraid when I see a group of teenage girls. Oh my fucking god. Like, that is the scariest sight to me. Something about that just, oh, makes me feel uncomfy. You know what I can't quite wrap my head around is that, like, in the future, girls are gonna be... I say girls, but I really mean anyone of absolutely any gender. God damn it, Sora. Stay politically correct. Sitting with their freaking, like, Uggs, listening to the One Direction album that was released in, like, 2011 or 2012, being like, I wish I was around during the 2010s. Like, that was such a beautiful time in history. <laughs> That's the biggest joke I've ever heard. I don't know if I can really believe that that'll happen, but I know based on what has happened across previous generations that it will most likely happen. Because there are so many trends that we never thought would be anything. Like all the 2000s trends that are coming back now. Nobody ever thought that those would come back. At least I didn't. Oh my god. People are gonna find feelers and Adidas superstars in vintage stores and be like, oh, oh my god, this rare vintage find. Like, this is so amazing. Jeggings are probably gonna make a comeback. The day that jeggings come back is the day that I lose faith in humanity. That is a trend that should stay dead. I wonder if loom bands are gonna make a comeback. I never knew how to make a fucking loom band. I was not very dexterous. And there was like that whole scandal about loom bands being cancerous and people were like, if you put them in your mouth, you're gonna get cancer. And after my mom read that on like News 24, I remember this time I was chilling in class and I found a loom band on my desk and I just put it in my mouth and chewed it like a fucking toddler. And I was like, Okay, I guess I've just got cancer now. I'm ready for my Hazel Grace and Augustus love story. Is The Fault in Our Stars gonna go down in history as like a classic in the future? I feel really bad, but after I read that book, I really wanted cancer. I don't know, the book made it seem so glamorous, even though I knew it wasn't, because my grandma had cancer. So I knew that it wasn't a fun time. Something about the way that John Green made cancer sound was just so appealing to 13 year old me. Maybe it was just because I was hormone crazed and I would take any boy, regardless of what diseases he had or how long he was expecting to live. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck this video is, but I hope you enjoyed me rambling in the car. I hope this was mildly entertaining. Honestly, I don't know why you stick around, but thank you. You've seen me sit in this car way too many times. It's just because I have nowhere else to film. If you made it to the end of this video, you're an absolute champion, because I know I would not watch this whole video. Props to you. See you guys next time. Bye.